Okay. Welcome, 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 welcome. Welcome, Thank welcome, you guys. welcome, 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 welcome. I'm really happy because, <laughs> no, I'm so happy. Reason why, because Wendy and I, the timing, the time zone, and, um, you know, the apology was sent from the missing the, the first the first meeting we were supposed to have. And um, then this morning, it was like, what? what is going on with the time difference? You know, it's like, okay, you know what? Let's stick with, let's do it for this time and see what happens. So I'm really happy that we are here. She's made it. I've made it too. <laughs> so we've Wendy, yeah, we've all made it. Um, and Wendy is, went, went, Miss, Miss Wendy is a talent manager. And we're going to have a discussion about um, everything we need to know, especially from a Caribbean point of view, what Hollywood is looking for. We have Mrs. Chin, who is a theater teacher. And um, there's nothing wrong with any one of us learning how to get ourselves forward. And I know for you, Wendy, that you come across a lot of talents. And, but when it comes to the Caribbean in particular, uh, I know there's, there's a big difference that we may have one outlook, what we think Hollywood wants, but you who is living it can tell us this is exactly what Hollywood needs, especially when it comes to foreign or international actors yeah. and things like that and mrs chin i know in particular because she's a theater teacher she teaches and of course the acting techniques are going to be a little different of course but at the same time we want to ensure that we are meshing with what yeah. you know what what is required so wendy i'm going to give us open the floor for you to let us know who you are give us a, just a rundown about you and then i'm going to start asking my questions sounds great well thank you so much uh, Francois for having me here. It's a great pleasure to teach actors anytime about the business because I, I love this business and uh, the more that actors know about the business part of it, the better they're going to do. Yes. Because a lot of times they learn about the show and we all have to, you know, the bottom line is actors have to be great. The acting has to be great. And when you're a strong trained actor and you do great, great work, people are going to take notice. But you have to also understand the business side of it because you have to know how to package yourself, how to sell yourself because you're the product. You know, you're the CEO of your own private, your own company. You're the product, you're the marketing director. <laughs> you are in charge of your online materials, your networking, building relationships, following up with people in the business. So understanding the business is critical because there's a lot of talented people who don't make it because they don't understand the business. And there's a lot of great business people who aren't talented and not trained and they're not going anywhere either. So this, this is about the combination of both. So I have, I started as a singer uh, in my career, in my life. It was always my dream was to sing. I did that for about 20 years. And then I, I became a manager and then I became an agent. And I really love helping new people get started. So my interest, when I started as an agent, we represented a lot of celebrities, but when I became a manager, I really wanted to work with new people that had never got, had, that still haven't gotten where they wanted to go yet. You know, the, the dream is there. Now they just need the training to push, you know, the information. And that's where my key sweet spot is. I love helping those people. Um, I find that actors who graduate colleges or NYU or Juilliard or Yale, they come out with some good training, but zero understanding of the business. And so I talk to people who have MFAs who've never heard of Actors Access. And in, L in the United States, if you wanna work in the United States, you have to have an Actors Access account. Actors Access is the most important account there is because that is what all agents and managers use. And when an actor creates a profile on Actors Access and puts their headshots and their acting clips on there, then that's what we send to agents, to casting directors. So when an actor applies for management or looks for an agent and doesn't have that link, what are we gonna use to sell them with? I mean, there's nothing we can send because that's the platform we send. And I find actors come out of Yale and they don't even know that. You know, and they just spent $200,000 on a career and they don't have the most important information. So I'm committed to helping actors succeed. I created my YouTube channel 
to give actors free information. Like every time something comes up in my office, here's what, here's what you need to do. Um, that's been really helpful for thousands of actors around the world. And then I created a platform called Talent Managers for Actors, which is an online um, Facebook group where we have 65,000 actors that I'm coaching and agents and managers, casting directors, producers come in and they volunteer their time to answer questions whenever they can. So our rule is in the group, actors don't answer each other. We let industry people answer the questions. And I also created a course, an online academy, and the master course for actors teaches actors the business side of it. How to get an agent, how to write cover letters, how to market yourself, how to know your type, how to build relationships, how to create the right headshots, acting clips, um, everything the business side of it is, how to have the right mindset. Because your mind, what you believe is what you're going to attract, what you're going to achieve, what you think about yourself is the truth. So uh, we try to teach people to elevate what they're thinking about themselves, uh, elevate their understanding that there's a place for everybody. There's a place for everybody in this business, all types, all ages, all sizes and shapes, colors, races, countries. There, there are jobs for everybody, more now than ever before. So we want people to have the right mentality and not think in, not think in terms of lack, like, oh, I'm in, I'm in the Caribbean. How am I going to work? And, and you can work. If your acting is great, you can go on tape and you can submit to agents and managers. If someone falls in love with your talent, they're going to want to see that everywhere. They're going to want you to get auditions in New York or in London or in LA or Atlanta. And they'll be the first one to send your tapes to people. So I want you to know that wherever you are, there's, there's ways to work. Whether you create your own online webinar, what is it called? Web series. You could create a web series and it gets such great traction around the world that people come looking for you. It can get picked up by Hulu, by Netflix, by Amazon Prime. It can be turned into a HBO series. I think YouTube's changed the world because you can be in charge of your own content. You can decide how you want to demonstrate your talent, write it, direct it, or get together with great writers and directors and you can control the narrative. And I think from any country, uh, your career is possible. When it comes to coming to the United States and working in this country, that's a little more complicated. And that takes um, going to an immigration attorney and really talking to them about what is required uh, in your own country, what kind of check benchmarks you have to check off and present. And especially during this time, I won't say it's not possible because everything's possible. But this is a time where, you know, Americans can't even go into France right now. So <laughs> COVID yes, has got yes. a lot of us trapped in our trapped country. Everybody has everybody trapped. And is everybody I, trapped? Yeah, I know that um, right now, like our government of Antigua and Barbuda has something called NDR, um, National, um, um, oh boy, I just forgot the word. But basically what it is, a two NDR, which is a two-year residency for persons who wants to work remotely on the Caribbean island itself and um, because of COVID, because persons are looking to flee, flee, fleeing, you know, so why not come to Antigua, um, work for two years as a resident, you get your visa and everything, you still can be able to travel back and forth with this particular um, visa itself. And um, so, so with Americans that are looking for places, to work um, remotely, Antigua has offered that um, option itself. Where they could so that means they, are they allowed to come live there and yep. work for two years? Well, I think it's yep. a great idea. Yes. Great idea. Yes, yes. They're able to work for two years um, from the when it, from the day you a process, you go through the process, you, the application form, everything, and you work for two years. You still abide, of course, by our law. <laughs> you know, but um, yes, I, I mean, it's a, I think it's a great thing as well. I'll, I'll, I'll send you the details so you can look at it because I think it's something that even from an actor point, actor's point of view. No? Absolutely. It's a great opportunity. Right. I love it. Right. So my question, my first question to you is, and um, I'm go how I'm going to ask my questions. I say it all the time. I'm going to ask my questions. If I know, kind of know, I don't know, occasional, I know but I'm going to ask. <laughs> okay. So my first question to you is, 
who is a talent manager? A talent manager is somebody who usually develops talent from scratch or takes newer talent and helps them develop their package. And their package is their acting, samples of their acting, um, which is usually called a demo reel. And, and in the United States, we use a lot of clips. So we don't just use demo reel. We use, yeah, individual 30 second clips, which um, demonstrate like a type of role you play. So let's say I play a nurse. I would create a 30 second self tape of me talking to an actor off camera. Um, that other actor might be a doctor or a patient and I'm doing a scene as a nurse. Uh, or if I'm playing a mother, I would create a 30 second clip playing a mother. And, <clears throat> excuse me, and it's not necessary to have a whole, whole demo reel because if I'm applying for the role of a nurse, that nurse clip could be at the end of a reel. And if casting only looks at 10 seconds, they'll never see my clip as a nurse. So what we teach actors to do is break down their clip, break down their reel into individual clips. And, and that's something that a manager is gonna teach a new actor because most new actors don't understand that. And they're just gonna be trying to do student films and short films and trying to get footage to create a reel. But we don't really use reels like that. So. Um, another thing a manager does is kind of guide you into the right training to make sure you're taking cold reading, improv, on camera, scene study, uh, and to make sure you realize that training is something that never ends. It is something you do from the minute you want to become an actor all the way through your career. It's not something you could just do for a little while and, hey, I'm good, now I'm done. You never stop learning as an actor. And <clears throat> every teacher can teach you something different that you didn't know. Question is, what experiences, if any, should an agent or manager have if they wish to represent an artist? What experience should the agent or manager have? Yeah, should they have any? Yeah, because I've, I'm aware that sometimes um, persons want to be a manager for an artist, but then there is no experience behind so well, should they I have mean, some sort you, of experience, yeah. You have to have experience. I mean, if you don't know how to manage an actor, what are you going to do? If you don't know how to negotiate, you know, how to... Another thing managers do is we, off, we also set the actor up with agents. Uh, we set them up with publicists if they need them, business people if they need them. We, we look at scripts and we help decide what kind of projects they should do. We kind of look at their overall career. While a talent agent is simply responsible for submitting the actor for jobs and then negotiating the contract. So in the United States, in Los Angeles, for example, managers are not legally allowed to negotiate a contract. So we have to have agents involved because they're the only people, they're a licensed employment agency, really, that's what their license is. So they have the, the license to negotiate and close contracts on behalf of clients and managers don't have that license, especially in California. Now in New York, there's an addendum to the law that allows managers to negotiate contracts. So sometimes a person might only have a manager because now managers are acting a lot more like agents. But I always tell people, if you wanna be a manager, work in like as an intern or as an assistant in a manager company, like company, a management company. When I became a manager, I was an agent first, but I, being an agent doesn't make me qualified to be a manager. I mean, I still need to understand the difference in what managers do. So I went and assisted Whoopi Goldberg's manager, um, Michelle, Sarah Michelle Geller's manager, uh, Bohemian Entertainment. We had Steve Gutenberg. We had a lot of other. I think I worked in three different management companies to learn what managers do mm. before I felt qualified to start my own management company. Okay. Okay, I understand. Okay, yeah. that makes, that makes I mean, what, sense. What can you do for the actor if you don't really know how a manager and what a manager does? And even when I was an agent and when I had worked with managers, manager companies to learn, even when I became a manager, I still had two people I got on the phone with all the time. How do I do this? How do I do that? What, what you know, other managers, what would, it, would you do in this situation? What should I do in this situation? So having a mentor is very important someone who can walk you through this stuff until you've done it all so much, you know it yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I actually had a question about, um, about mentors. I actually, had a, I actually had a question here about mentors. Mentors, why are they important 
and also who should be a mentor should be a family a friend somebody from the church or the synagogue that they worship with um why um uh, mentors are important that that's a question i actually have right here well you might have different mentors for different parts of your life i mean you know you have a spiritual mentor maybe or you have a, a you know a career mentor but a mentor is someone who's already done what you want to do so instead of trying to figure it all out on your own it could take years to figure you know why you should leverage the, the knowledge they already have they've already done the research they've already done the work They've already had success in that field. It's like if I wanted to put together a car, I'm not just going to go stand in front of all the parts and pieces and try to figure it out myself. I mean, that's just stupid. It would take me forever. I want to talk to someone who's taken a car apart and put it back together mm -hmm. and the car runs. Mm -hmm. So now you tell me what you just did. <laughs> you tell me how to do it. Walk me through it. Show me how until I can do it on my own. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be, it's a, it's a much faster pace mm -hmm. to get to where you want to go if you have an expert showing you how to do it. Okay. All right. And I would do it, you know, I have mentors in what I do. When I started my business um, with my, my Winter Circle coaching program online, my, my online school, uh, I'd never had an online school before. Mm -hmm. So I never had to create YouTube videos for selling a product or um, creating webinars or funnels or sales mm -hmm. funnels and all this other stuff. I mean, I have a business partner that's really good at that. And then we take classes with experts to learn how to do everything else. Cause how do I know that I'm a manager? Mm -hmm. So anytime I learn something new, I get a mentor. I think we paid $8,000 for this course, um, which is a lot of money to spend on a course, but we want to learn from experts so that we can be the best we can be so that we can help the most people and help as many actors as we can be successful. Mm -hmm. And if I spent time trying to figure that out on my own, I mean, I, that's like doing brain surgery on yourself. Right. right. Because, you know, sometimes you have persons who, you know, yeah, I would be a mentor. I don't mind helping you, but they just don't have the experience or they don't have it. So your career becomes stagnant. If you find I'm coming from, you become stagnant. But then you're like, you know, I, I just want to please that family member because they're really looking out for me. I want to please that friend, you know, and these kind of things. So it's like, okay, I, I'm, I appreciate you want to be my mentor, but then what do you have behind of you that can help me to go forward? You know, yeah, I'm not going to waste my time with working with anyone who doesn't know what they're doing. Right. Like, what is that going to do for me? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and I remember when I became a manager, I used to say, I'm not a manager until my actors are working in student films and short films until I've taken someone brand new and I've got them on set. Okay. Now I'm not a manager a real manager until they're working in commercials. I'm not a manager until they're signed to agencies and they're auditioning for TV and film, mainstream. I'm not a manager, real a manager, until they're working on TV and I can turn the television on and there's my actor. And la two years ago, I met them in a restaurant. I'm a manager when they've gone from nothing to television. And once that happened, then I could call myself a manager because now I'm an expert at what I'm doing and I know how to do it. And when I say I can take you from this chair you're in, in the sitting in the department store waiting for your friend, you yeah. have the look and get yeah. you in the right classes. You have the drive. You're going to do what I say. Okay, I can get you there if you do what I say. Right. And now I can do that. And I've done that over, you know, for hundreds and hundreds. And now I've done it for thousands of people. Yeah. So I consider myself an expert. Right. But I wasn't an expert when I started. I had benchmarks for me about what I would have to achieve in order for me to feel comfortable saying I'm an expert. Yeah. Right. Okay. All right. So here's another question. <clears throat> what are the top five things Hollywood look for from foreign actors? Example, Caribbean actors. A question. What are the top five things Hollywood look for from foreign actors? Example, Caribbean actors. Well, talent is the first thing. I mean, we need talent, talented people, people who um, are really gifted as actors, singers, dancers, writers, producers, performers, whatever, very gifted. Uh, the next trained, people who are trained, they have invested in themselves and in their training and they've become the best possible artist they can be. Um, a willingness to relocate, and come over if that's what's necessary. We, we look for people who 
can afford to get into the United States for an audition if that's what's required. Um, but I think talent and training is the first thing we look for. Um, the ability to, to get to the, to the places where you have to work or audition. And we look for people, number four, I think, who are not waiting for other people to give them a career, but are busy actively creating their own materials, uh, writing and producing their own short films, people that are taking their career into their own hands. Like I said before, creating webinars for YouTube or creating content that they can sell and market at film festivals and things like that. We're not looking for people who are looking for someone else to do the work for them. We're looking for entrepreneurs, partners, people that are hungry and go-getters and are not waiting for handouts in this business, but are like, look, I'm, I've, I'm in the Caribbean. I've produced four movies. You know, one of my movies is at the film festival. I just won best actress for it. I've got a web series on here. That's got 16 million, you know, views. And I'm, um, constantly creating content and working with people. I'm also in my own country starring in this movie and that movie on this television show and that television show. I'm a hustler. I am, <laughs> yes. I'm, a, I'm an actor and I'm acting. Yeah. I'm not waiting for someone to give me an acting career. I'm an actor and I'm asking you to partner with me to manage the career I'm already building. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. I think I, that's, I've only got four, really. That's what they are. Well, I mean, those make sense. Uh, they really make sense. They really do. I know that Miss Campbell has a question. Um, cause it's, um, I just, Miss Campbell, I think she, um, uh, not certain if you can speak. Can you hear uh, Miss Campbell? Uh, let me see her name. Her name is Onika Campbell. My son is a dancer and an animator. And what, and the question to you is, what is the age group that you work with? And that's to you, Miss uh, Wendy. Yeah, hi, Onika. Um, I work with, well, I'm coaching actors now on the business side of it. And people that take my course can be, I have teenagers all the way up to people in their 70s and 80s. So um, all ages, all ages. And um, I'm only managing our literary artists right now, writers. Which, what is your son? He's a dancer and an animator. And an animator, yeah. Yeah, so... Listen, if your son is a dancer, then he should be doing videos on YouTube dancing. Every week, a new video where we get to see his talent and talent draws an audience. When people are talented, they come around and agents and managers have departments, especially a lot of, everybody has departments now of people who scour the internet, social media, TikTok. I don't know what's going on with that right now in the States. <laughs> I don't know what's going on with that, but um, TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, there are casting directors and agencies that have departments that scour social media to find talent, to find people, to find people that are drawing attention, that are getting millions and millions of views or that are funny, you know, and because those are the people we want. We want we're looking for talent. We look everywhere. You know, I'm glad you said, I'm glad you, you know, I'm glad that you said, um, um, social media, because I remember someone was telling me that they don't see the need of using social media to show their work. I'm saying, but you do, because you just don't know who may come across the page and need to see something. It's not just something writing. So I'm really happy that you, you mentioned that the need to use social media to showcase your work. I mean, that why is, you wouldn't know. you use social media? You know, it's if it's a problem. if it's a mainstream platform that gets you exposure, mm -hmm. and you know, find getting seen is critical because people can't hire you if they don't know you exist. So if you if they don't know you exist, they can't think of you for a project. It's when people see your work and they go, oh, "I love that artist. They yeah. they might be right for this, that, and the other." Well, let me let me audition them for my project and maybe they're right or not right for your project at that time or that particular role but they're right for other things they might be right for your next project you can refer them to other people and people hire people they know so you got to get known that's what tv commercials do they make products known right mm -hmm. well that's what instagram does they make your product known you're the product mm -hmm. that's you're, what youtube videos do right you were saying something miss jen Yes, I was saying that's the same problem I have with my daughter and a few of the youths that I teach because four or five of them want to go on into performing arts. Like my daughter is an actress, a singer, a dancer, 
and a songwriter, but she's more serious in singing and songwriting. She acts, but she says that's not her passion. Her passion is singing and songwriting. But I'm saying to her, get out there, create your videos, do things so people can see you. You can't rely on what's happening locally alone because we are a small island. And she's like, but mommy, I don't want people to see me yet. I'm waiting until I, I drop my music. Yeah, but when are you going to drop it? When are you going to get money to drop it? Do something now. Create your own videos and put it out. So, Absolutely. She, she just doesn't understand. Yeah. Um, she's young, right? So yeah. part of creating her own content would be to get with some people that have cameras, that are creative, that can shoot music videos. They don't have to be complicated. We just have mm -hmm. to see her. Mm -hmm. And her expression, her mm -hmm. emotions, her singing, her song, and mm -hmm. create videos and put them on YouTube. Mm -hmm. She doesn't have to spend $10,000 on a production. Mm -hmm. She needs to get with other creative people who also, because mm -hmm. creative people who make videos or make movies, they want someone to work with. How do they yep. get their experience? You know? yep. Yep. But she yep. absolutely needs a YouTube channel. There's no such yep. thing as a singer without a YouTube channel. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Right? I mean, because yep. YouTube, that can blow... I have a friend, her name is Kat Arangi. She's a casting director. She casts America's Got Talent, The Voice, uh, American Idol. She casts all those singing programs. She casts big, sh big little big shots, all these different competition shows. And mm. she scours the YouTube mm. for artists, wow. for, for talent. Mm. And sometimes wow. when I come across a talent, I'll send it to her. She goes, I already know about them. I'm like, oh, I can't mm. beat her. <laughs> I cannot get someone to her. She has not discovered already online. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, your daughter is doing herself. And she that's insecurity. Yes. She's scared. She's scared yes. that she's not enough. She's scared she won't be liked. She's yeah. scared she's not good enough. You know what? Yeah. She's got to get over that. It's yeah. just, you have to put your, there's a piece of advice Liza Minnelli gave me a long time ago. Mm. She said, sing everywhere. Because you yeah. never know who's going to hear you. Yes. That was and, me as a actress. Yes. And Michael McDonald, I sang with him in um, Rotterdam. No, no. Rotterdam? In Amsterdam. Uh, the Dorothy Jazz Festival. Somewhere. Mm -hmm. I don't remember. In Amsterdam somewhere. In Holland. Mm -hmm. And he said to me, not everyone's going to like your singing. Not everyone's your cup of tea. You're not everyone's cup of tea. Mm -hmm. he, he says, everyone doesn't like me. Mm -hmm. I sing for my people. Yeah. The people that are my fans, that yeah. love what I do, I sing for me and I sing for them. Yeah. The rest of the people, that's not, <laughs> that's not my people. Mm -hmm. So your daughter has to understand that she'll have her fans, her mm -hmm. crowd, her people, mm -hmm. everyone. You'll have your own fan group. Mm -hmm. and that's who you're singing for. That's who you're working for. Yes, yeah. Francesca. Go ahead, Francesca. Um, I, I, oh, hello, I'm Francesca as well. It's nice to meet everybody here. I had the same issue as uh, Miss Chin's daughter. <laughs> My mom, <laughs> she encouraged me, encourages me to go out there, especially on social media. Um, what I like to do is voice acting. So I can change my voice for this? Or I can do a very deep one. Or something like that. <laughs> so I'm not too sure how, you know, what should I do with it on YouTube? I've been going on a lot of um, voice acting websites. Well, um, that's how I you need a voice acting demo yeah. reel. Do you have that? Um, I know you were just explaining what a demo reel was and I was writing it down. But okay, so sure a like demo reel is it. a sample of the voices that you can do, right? Because when yeah. you reach out to someone and you say, I'm a voiceover actress, they're going to say, let me hear your tape. Okay. That's the first thing, right? So you want to have a tape and you can create it. Let me see. Um, so there's, there's different studios. There's a place called, I know in America, there's a place called Edge Studios. Hold on a minute. Let me share my screen with you. Is that okay? Yeah. Can you yeah. can you make me a co-host for a second and I can share my screen with her, with all yeah. of you? So yeah. I'm going to go into my Facebook group called the Winners Inner okay. Circle. All right. And I know mm -hmm. inside the Winners Inner Circle, I had a voiceover teacher come in. And how do I search within my... You know, they changed the format in here. Oh, here it is. Okay. It's over here. Voice over. Search that. So I had this, how to start your voiceover career, voiceover sound, before, okay, was this BZ Collins, Bonza, BZ, Maggie, hi Maggie, that's the one I want, Maggie, Maggie Mayfield, okay, that's who I'm looking for, Maggie Mayfield, M-A-G-G-I-E, M-A-Y-F-I-E-L-D, Maggie Mayfield, 
Notes from today's session. Okay, so I'm going to give you this information. I'm going to cut and paste it and put it in the chat where we're yeah. talking right now. Okay, I'll definitely write this all. Well, I'll copy oh. paste it as well. I'm going to grab all of this. Hey, maybe I'm going to grab it. There it is. <sighs> Control C. All right. So what we talked about was these are these are resources that she talked about online. Edge Studio, I'm going to put it in the chat, but Edge Studio, HB Studio, Voice One, and Shut Up. Mm -hmm. These places teach voiceover, and you need to invest in a good mic. Here's some samples. Mm -hmm. And then here's very important websites for voiceover actors. You have to create a demo reel, and Maggie's a person who can help you. Mm -hmm. And then you upload to SoundCloud, because SoundCloud's all over the world. Right. Okay. And uh, she has a free ebook. So I'm going to give you the information. Let me figure out how to stop sharing my screen now. I so what about uh, Access? I know Access Connection New York. Um, I know they just have classes as well, and they have voiceover classes as well too. Access Connection well, thank New you York. Very much for that. Let me just close all of these. Jeez. Since I'm online, a million people know I'm here. Okay, oh. so. <laughs> Okay, so this is, what I just sent you is what she taught right. in a two-hour session. Mm -hmm. And, you know, take that information. Mm -hmm. And there's also samples like SoundCloud. I think in here she's got her website, which has voiceover samples of what right. demo reels yeah. are. She's got a free ebook to teach you how to create whatever, you know, and her email address. You can email her with questions. Oh, wow. Well, thank but you. Man. A voiceover artist, I had, I represented a voiceover artist once. He, he recorded all his voiceover, his voices that he could do. He does a lot of cartoons. And he sent it, and, and we sent it to CESD, which is a voiceover agency. And he was signed by them. And they have a studio. So some places you go into the studio, other places you record it in your own studio. From wherever you are in the world, audiobooks, cartoons, commercials, you know, advertisements. You can do that from your own studio to create the right sound. And it doesn't have to even be an expensive. Mm -hmm. Okay. It just has to have good sound. You know, a lot of people record in their closet. They just get those uh, acoustic <laughs> things and they put them on the wall. Yeah, I always see those on YouTube or those tutorials or how to make your room, um, you know, eliminate those background noises. Yeah. You know, my mic flashed on the um the toilet paper advertisement where the, the, the entire house is filled with the toilet paper and then he turned up and then started like and no sound like you're right. <laughs> <laughs> and so you're just like you're yeah, right. Um but for Onique, um Miss Campbell, with your son who is an um a dance, a dancer and an animator. So you were mentioning earlier that he was a part of different um, TV shows. Um, I think what would be good is that you can, uh, if it's possible, if you don't have it, that you can ask them meet the, 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 the places that would have filmed him and have it a part of his reel, um, as, as Ms. Uh, Ms. Wright spoke about the demo reel. So that can be placed so when he is being scouted, those um, events that he would have participated in is right there for him, for, for, for persons like her to see. Make sure that when you do that, though, you get them. See how we're framed? I'm framed like just from here to here. All of us are. That's all we want to see. We don't want to see footage from, I mean, as a dancer, that's different. We want to see head to toe. But we want to see footage of the dancer, not in a group of 25 other dancers where we can't tell which dancer it is. You know, get into the studio somewhere and just get it if it's your son dancing with two other dancers sometimes that's like the choreographies they the moves together with two behind get people that don't look like him you know get people that are a little different you know if he's a guy two girls or two different style you know different but you don't want your own competition in your own demo reels first of all so you want you want it to focus on you and when it comes to any kind of acting clips not from the stage, not from the theater. It's too far away. TV is a medium where we need to see your eyes and your expressions. So, you know, all your footage needs to be cropped, like right here, head to mid chest, so that we can watch you reacting to the other person. 
-hmm. but for for a uh, for dancer yeah i mean he was a host so let's that you know having a hosting reel is one thing a dancing reel is another and if you act, singing. Like acting reel is another you need you need singing to singing singing reel mm -hmm. and then you have uh, a reel that uh, those are you have individual reels that you on your website you you label them individually dancing reel singing reel hosting reel uh, acting reel and then you put one demo reel of, of a combination of all of that so that you have those to choose from depending on because if you're sending a reel to someone who wants to hear your singing voice we don't need to see your dancing you know get right to the point they said singing let's see singing if someone wants to see your dancing, we don't need to see your acting. So the reel with everything on it is for someone who wants to see the full range of your talent. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you pick and choose which reels and which clips you're going to send to 